Hi, this is Matt McCormick from the Department of Philosophy at California State University, Sacramento. This is my second lecture on David Chalmers' article, The Singularity. This is for my Philosophy of Artificial Intelligence course. Um, and I wanted to get to this part of Chalmers' article because deep buried at the end of this thing, he's got this really interesting discussion of uploading your consciousness. And we got to think about that for um, our range of ideas for the semester. So uh, to start on where we are sort of halfway through the article is that Chalmers has made this argument for um, you know, a pretty good case that, um, or we get some good evidence for thinking that uh, an AI superintelligence is coming. So if that's right, and he thinks that, you know, with a bunch of provisos, a bunch of conditions that could happen, then where do we fit? What do we do? How do humans get integrated into a post-singularity world? And there are several of these options are not very good. One of them is extinction. That's not a very good solution for the human race. Um, isolation, maybe we want to all uh, opt to opt out of technology like the Amish or something. We don't want to have a technological or cultural um, to, in order to avoid uh, a singularity, but that doesn't seem very viable either because we don't want to have total technological and cultural isolation. Um, maybe it's inevitable that we'll just be the uh, inferior slave race to the uh, coming super intelligence, uh, our robot masters, um, but that doesn't promise much for uh, happiness for humanity. So that leads Chalmers then to this question or this idea that integration um, we need to become super intelligent systems ourselves is the best way um, for us to achieve some kind of control or to be peers with them. I don't know how serious Chalmers is about that, but he does want to talk about uploading and some of the issues there, and uh, I do too. So um, one other option here that Chalmers neglects, and again, this is 10 years ago, so it's before Bostrom, before Russell, before uh, Nate Suarez, before Yudkowsky, before a number of people have written a bunch of these recent um, uh, analyses, Chalmers doesn't talk about the other obvious possibility, and namely that's cohabitation and control, um, that we find a way to control super, super intelligent AI. So that's what we've been working on all semester. Um, Chalmers is running down a different sort of path on this angle. Okay, so let's talk about uploading. That's going to start with some kind of brain emulation. I've argued, I think last time, that seriously emulating all 83 billion neurons with five to 50,000 uh, synaptic connections each is not possible, but maybe there's some kind of functional uh, uh, equivalence uh, emulation that might be possible. And Chalmers thinks, and he's got to be right about this, that some kind of um, brain enhancement uh, procedures are coming. And then once we get good enough about all of that, once we um, understand how the brain emulation works or enhancement, maybe then we're going to migrate, be able to migrate entirely over to computer systems. And he thinks you got to get rid of your biology um, in order to pull this off. The best way to achieve enhancement, longevity, improvement, expansion, and our being able to deal with uh, artificial superintelligence is to get rid of your biological, get rid of your meat. So um, let's consider some distinctions that Chalmers needs in order to lay these arguments out. Um, let's imagine a scenario where we gradually replace your neurons one at a time with a silicon circuit that's functionally isomorphic that does exactly the same sorts of things that your previous neuron did. Uh, just to get that in your head. And then later we're going to have the ability perhaps to do instant scanning and active activation. So you copy your whole uh, neural network, simulate it and turn it on. Um, maybe we'd be able to scan your whole neural system and then delay activation for later. Or possibly um, earlier on in the technological unfolding, destructive uploading is more likely. The process, the actual process we end up using um, uh, to uh, map all of the neural connections in the brain uh, ends up destroying the brain in the process. Uh, so maybe you don't want to sign up for that. Or uh, maybe we can find some non-destructive uploading options that would leave your brain and your consciousness intact and create a new one in the new system, the new simulation, or in the new uh, robot body. 
And finally, we got we might have uh, reconstructive uploading options where we use the information and then rebuild uh, you later from what you had before. Okay, so to, in order to talk about these options and consider these arguments that Chalmers has got laid out, we need a little bit of philosophy of mind. So we need to consider some theories of consciousness, and Chalmers is a good person to talk to on this. So somebody might have, he lays out the range of views here, somebody might have a strongly biological view about consciousness, that only um, the consciousness can only inhabit a biological, uh, you know, meat system. Uh, but more commonly in the 20th century, um, when Chalmers got trained in the 21st century, people are functionalists of some sort. Um, and functionalists think that it's the causal structure and the role of the parts of the cognitive system that matter. So non-biological systems could be, in principle, could be conscious as long as they're organized correctly. So there's a long, interesting debate here in philosophy of mind in the 20th century about just what <clears throat> sort of system uh, could be conscious, and there's a uh, there's a sort of this ontological neutrality uh, debate over what what kind of system uh, consciousness could be instantiated in. So uh, Chalmers is going to side more or less here with the functionalist, although there's a lot of details in the background. And then we've been talking about connectionism. So connectionism is a variety of functionalism. Um, Chalmers doesn't talk about it in the article, but we've raised this possibility of your connectome, which is the complete map of all the neural connections of your system. So that's a way to think about capturing maybe what's important. You know, if we're a functionalist, then we're trying to figure out where the causal structures or causal connections and what are the modules that, that um, uh, play the roles that end up producing consciousness. And if you're a connectionist, you think, well, it, it boils down to capturing the neural connections down there at the uh, dendritic level. Uh, you know, and finally, more a little bit more historically, of course, there's dualists out there who think that your Im immaterial soul is distinct from your body. And Chalmers doesn't even give, give this view any consideration at all. Um, and he wants got a bunch of sort of speculative thought experiments here for us to think about. So here's one. Um, if we were to map your full connectome and then and all the pattern of fire, patterns of firing from your system to a computer, and then we ran that in a simulation, what would happen? What would, what would that be like? Would there be anything it's like to be in there to be that system? Uh, so that's the first of sort of these sort of uh, fanciful uh, 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 global skepticism scenarios that Chalmers is worried about. Okay, so let's consider this option. He's going to get a lot of mileage out of this. Suppose we upload... Um, one neural circuit at a time. So before I talked about replacement, well, suppose we do the same thing where we copy uh, one of your neural circuits one at a time, putting them into place in a perfect, you know, perfect functional isomorphs into the simulation into the system. Or alternately, suppose we replace each of your neurons with a synthetic artificial circuit one at a time. What happens next? Would you notice the change? Would it feel different to you? Would things go slowly dark from your perspective if you were getting your neurons replaced one at a time by um, artificial ones? And Chalmers considers three possible positions here, three possible answers. Maybe as soon as we change some of your uh, neurons, um, your consciousness suddenly goes dark. It suddenly disappears. Uh, Chalmers says, well, that seems implausible. Uh, he doesn't make this point, but I will. Uh, you know, there's brain damage cases where people, well, I don't know, a heavy night of drinking does more than that, wipes out more neurons, and we don't think your consciousness goes dark from that. Or you have a stroke, <clears throat> you lose a few neurons. We don't think that, that at the function, the performance of every single neuron in your system has to be exactly what it is in order for you to be conscious. And we don't think that removing one or replacing it with an artificial circuit is enough to wipe out your consciousness. So that seems that seems implausible. Uh, would it gradually fade away as we replaced more and more of your neurons? Uh, Chalmers says, and I think he's right, it's hard to see why this would happen. I mean, maybe you'd have whole abilities or capacities or modules that would vanish. But this raises the question, you know, if we're replacing your meat with uh, artificial circuits, what is what exactly is the um, do we want to hold that the biological substrate itself is essential does it have to be made of meat and that seems implausible if you're a modern functionalist it seems like it shouldn't have to be the same thing um, Chalmers thinks <clears throat> more likely what's going to happen and be curious to hear from you guys what you think um, 
were I to go through systematically and replace more and more and more of your neurons with functionally isomorphic synthetic circuits, one at a time, and to the point where I've now replaced 30% of your brain, 40% of your brain, 50% of your brain, 99% of your brain has now got these artificial circuits. Chalmers thinks your consciousness would be continuous throughout the whole process. And so when I put the last artificial circuit in and take out the last um, neuron, uh, you're none the wiser. From your perspective, the whole thing is unfolded and had continuity from uh, your subjective perspective through the whole process. Uh, I, I don't, all I've got to go on here is my intuitions. Um, and I, I gotta say, I agree with Chalmers about that. It seems like that's right. And if that's right, then that means, he says, that consciousness is an organizational invariant. And what that means is systems that have the same patterns of causal organization have the same states of consciousness. And that's why your new synthetic brain you is still you and still conscious, or at least still conscious. That's all we're talking about now. So therefore, given organizational invariance, we can expect a good enough computer simulation of a conscious system to be conscious and to have the same sorts of conscious states as the original system. Okay, so right now, the only thing that Chalmers is just trying to figure out is, uh, would a synthetic or artificial or simulated system be conscious? We're not trying to figure out whether or not it's you yet. First question is just, would it have conscious states? Would it feel like something to be it? Would it have your memories? Would it have your um, uh, preferences? Would it like its coffee the same way? Um, and so on. And so far, everything seems to suggest, you know, our intuitions here seem to suggest that that would be true. Okay, so um, Chalmers thinks that we could we could maybe test this thing slowly, uh, one piece at a time. Um, maybe once we get to the point where we can start doing something like this, we'll do gradual. We'll like do a little test. Okay, okay just replace a few of my neurons and let me see. Okay, replace a few more. Uh, or maybe you'll get your, uh, get your friend to do it and you can watch them and see what happens to them. Uh, okay, so that establishes, he thinks, the question about whether or not a system would be conscious. So it's all really speculative. It's all like highly, you know, fanciful. But the claim is here that it seems like that were we to, were we able to, uh, with, with some sort of technological means to copy the causal functional, um, uh, attributes of your neurons, or maybe at some other bigger macro level, we were able to duplicate um, the right sorts of causal interactions of the parts of your neural system, then that thing would be conscious. It wouldn't be dark inside. Um, now the question becomes, is it you? Is the new system that we've replaced actually the same as you? Um, that is, we think that the, the you who made a cup of coffee this morning and drank it and the you that's listening to this now are the same person. So there's a question about personal identity or numerical identity that philosophers have been worried about for centuries, right? Um, you, you can see Leibniz talking about this. You see it go all the way back to the ancient Greeks. Um, so if you were uploaded and the new system is conscious, is that your consciousness or is it just a very similar um, conscious system to you or just another conscious system that has the same cognitive causal patterns as you. Um, that is, would you survive? Uh, and it seems like there's two positions here. You can be an optimist, says Chalmers. So the, uh, the, uplo the upload would be the same person as the original. So that's you. There's continuity between your identity as a person into the new system. Or if you're a pessimist, you say, no, the upload is not the same person. It's conscious. It has the same memories. It has the same feelings, same preferences or whatever, but it's not the same as me. The reason this matters is you want to know whether or not to sign the contract and do the thing, right? Um, because the difference between you surviving into the new consciousness or just someone who thinks they're you or has your memories uh, is a big difference. Or at least it matters to you. It ought to matter to you. Uh, and I won't, I won't give the spoiler here, but you ought to, if you haven't seen it, uh, rent the movie The Prestige with Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman. 
um, they play around with this worry and this idea and raise a really chilling possibility. Uh, okay, so in uploading then, um, let's consider some, some arguments and then Chalmers is going to push your intuitions back and forth here so we try to get some uh, clarity. Uh, so consider destructive uploading. Suppose I offer to copy and implant your connectome into a robot body, but the process will destroy your brain. Do you still want to do it? Um, maybe. Uh, she will wake up and have your thoughts, believe she is you. She'll have the same feelings, the same memories. Um, she'll recall undergoing the process, but suppose she's not actually you. Do you still want to do it? She will live for 200 more years and she'll be glad that you did it. But she is as different from you as I am with regard to personal identity. And now you're dead because this destroyed you in the process. That's the question. Uh, that is, uh, these two beings are qualitatively identical. They have the same properties, but they're not numerically identical. Um, that is, they're not the same in one, they're one and the same individual. And Chalmers has got a way to clarify this and make, bring out the... Uh, the point a little more clearly. Okay, so uh, the question now is, under what circumstances does a person, uh, the identical person, persist over time? Um, the extremely conservative position here might be to say, well, you have to have exactly the same matter that remains over time, or the person doesn't survive. And Chalmers doesn't you know, grant that any credency doesn't think that that's a plausible position. Nobody holds that view. You can't possibly hold that view because your matter changes all the time. Um, uh, and then in contrast, there's the extremely, extremely liberal position that says something like merely having the same sort of conscious states is enough for you to survive. Well, I'm not entirely sure that's right either. So we've got to figure out the options here. And then the chart here maps the different sorts of positions. So if you're an optimist about survival, and you undergo a destructive uploading process, then you survive. So that's you that wakes up in the new system. If you're an optimist and you go through non-destructive uploading, so now there's your physical body that you started with, and now there's either the simulated consciousness or a robot uh, system that has is inhabits, or a robot system that has your connectome inhabiting it, it, now there's two of you. There's actually two identical uh, people that have resulted from the process. Or if you're a pessimist, in destructive uploading, you murder the first person, and now you've got another, a new similar person that uh, uh, then goes on at thereafter. Or if you're a pessimist and you undergo non-destructive uploading, now there's two similar but different people. Um, okay, so uh, lots of people in, in the, working on the idea of personal identity in uh, philosophy have argued uh, for decades at least, no more than that, for centuries, uh, that some sort of continuity, uh, some sort of connectedness uh, of the conscious states from the, the prior consciousness to the later consciousness, that's what matters. Because your physical matter changes over the course of your life, but you know this goes back even to Locke, that there's some kind of continuity of, of ideas, of thoughts, of, uh, of preferences, of belief structure, of something. You know, what makes you the same? We say of you that you're the same person who was the five-year-old who went to kindergarten, right? You know, you see, you trace some personal identity to that person, even though there's been a radical difference in the physical um, configuration of the person. But you think of there being a psychological continuity between you and that person. So we're trying to figure out, okay, so once we've got the technology to be able to um, move you to another uh, physical system, what's the, what kind of continuity do we need in order to have that be you in the new system, not just a copy that walks and talks and acts and believes and remembers like you? Uh, okay, so uh, what kind of continuity do we need in order to achieve personal identity? Some people have argued for biological continuity, uh, but that seems like it's prejudicial and implausible. And I just suggested that what a lot of the really popular theories in philosophy have argued for is that there's some kind of psychological continuity that's required. Survival of personal identity requires psychological continuity, preservation of memories, causally related mental states, or something like that. And there's a whole field here that we're not going to dive into. And then he considers this... Um, close continuer theories 
that I think is related to Derek Parfit's, Parfit's position, but I don't know the background here. And the idea here is the person who survives is the one who's most closely related, um, the, the most closely related subsequent entity. That's the one that we call the identical person that moves on. Okay, so here's the first argument that's supposed to push you towards the uh, pessimistic view. Um, imagine that we take Dave, uh, Dave Chalmers yesterday and we load him up into a computer. Uh, so it's a non-destructive process. We copy his brain and then we put him into a computer and we fire it up. So now we've got Bio Dave and Digi Dave, uh, Digital Dave. Okay, so Bio Dave, after the process, thinks naturally that he's the original. He's the, the, the continuous uh, Dave that started this whole thing. And as a result, we have a pretty strong intu intuition here that Digital Dave doesn't have, for instance, any rights to any of Yesterday Dave's stuff. He doesn't get his mortgage. He doesn't get his friends. He doesn't get to go out. He he's not married to, to Dave's wife. Um, it seems like BioDave has a special status here. We've created another one, but doesn't BioDave have the right to go back to Yesterday Dave's house um, and drive Dave's car? Isn't that his car? Isn't that the identical person who's persisted? Um, that seems to give us a pretty powerful, uh, pessimistic uh, intuition here. Uh, that is, if we agree, then in the destructive uploading case, the new Dave is not Dave, but just a copy. That seems to be support for pessimism. Okay, so uh, imagine that we use a non-destructive process and we upload a copy of Dave, and now there's biological Dave and digital Dave. It seems like biological Dave is the one who is the owner of Dave's stuff. Uh, the one who has the rights, uh, the one who uh, is continuous with the previous Dave. And Digital Dave, while he may have some status, he might have some moral status, he might be owed some sort of treatment, he's not owed Digital Dave's property, for instance. Uh, so since that seems true, says Chalmers, then if the process was a destructive process, then the new Dave that results is not the Dave that started the thing, and there's not continuity between them. So this is not um, an argument from what it is internally to them. It's, a, it's an argument about sort of rights and, and, and uh, entitlements on the outside. Okay, so more formally, in non-destructive uploading, digital Dave is not identical to Dave, it seems. So if in non-destructive uploading, digital Dave is not identical to Dave, then in destructive uploading, digital Dave is not identical to Dave. There's nothing sort of specially philosophically significant about the dis difference between destructive and non-destructive uploading. Therefore, in destructive uploading, digital Dave is not identical to Dave. And that's supposed to give you pause about um, pushing the go button or signing the contract to get yourself copied and uploaded. <clears throat> okay, so that's an argument for pessimism. Let's consider the optimistic side. Um, the optimist might look at this argument, what can they do now? The person who thinks that, um, that there might be continuity, there might be uh, um, personal identity across this process. The optimist might deny premise two. They might try to say, um, something's wrong with the way uh, premise two works and they might say well actually in destructive uploading since digital dave is the closest continuing um, psychological entity digital dave is identical to uh, dave who started the process so they might protest about premise two um, or they might pre deny premise one say that digital dave is every bit as much dave as bio dave is um, but now digital Dave, uh, but now the, pro the, the sort of weird results as Chalmers is that digital Dave is identical to bio Dave, which can't be right. Like you've got these two very different sorts of entities. So, um, 
something weird about being an optimist and facing this argument. Nevertheless, Chalmers at the end of the day is going to reject this position in favor of another view. Um, or maybe alternately, here's another position between optimist and pessimist. We might say maybe we can accept that, that both, uh, both results are Dave. Digital Dave and Bio Dave are both Dave. And that there's been a fission, there's been a splitting that has produced two. And they're still identical. Um, maybe a little bit like when people have their left and right halves of their brains separate, um, but the, and it's both them, or, or he gives an allusion to, or he mentions one of those kinds of cases. Okay, so that's the argument that pushes us in the um, pessimist direction. Uh, here's an argument that's going to push us in the other direction. Imagine that I replace 1% of Dave's brain with a functionally isomorphic circuit, and then another 1%, and then another 1% for 100 months. Um, and it, we've already argued, or it seems like, that consciousness will remain through that process. So now consider that for all n greater than 100, Dave n plus 1 is identical to Dave n. That is to say, uh, it seems like uh, just changing 1% of your brain by one stage um, with a functionally isomorphic circuit, circuit seems like the U that started and the U that um, resulted with this 1% changed is still U. Uh, seems like not only is it conscious, so we use this argument to support the notion that consciousness uh, is sustained, and this now we're making this argument that identity is sustained. Uh, and it seems like we've got to accept a premise like this because um, this sort of thing is happening all the time. <clears throat> you know, your um, your eating and metabolizing and replacing your cells in your body over the course of your life. This is actually happening. There's functionally isomorphic new cells that are taking over for your old cells, and we don't think that that there's some um, interruption in your identity over time. So it seems like for every at least tiny step from n plus one to n that that the the u that um, results is identical to the u that started for the tiny step uh, so then predictably the next step is then for all of the steps one through a hundred if uh, Dave n plus one is identical to Dave n then Dave 100 is going to be identical to Dave look if we're taking a bunch of little steps and if every step along the way the second one is identical to the first then by transitivity if a is equal to b and b is equal to c then a is equal to c so that means that the Dave 100 is the same as the Dave that started. So therefore, Dave 100 is identical to Dave. Uh, so this is an argument, a pretty powerful argument, I think, because one and two have got to be true um, for personal identity over this um, transition or this gradual uploading. Seems like it's hard. I, Chalmers says this, and I agree with him. It's hard to deny one or two. The same thing happens every day when you eat dinner. So this argument seems to give support for the notion of personal survival and optimism um, that, uh, that, that there will be identity over the transition, not just consciousness, consciousness over the transition to another uh, form, but a personal identity to transition to another form. Okay, so naturally then uh, what Chalmers says to do is, okay, so speed it up. Um, look, we did that. We did that over the course of a hundred months, and you didn't mind it. So now let's just do it faster. Um, we've just established that Dave survives as Dave 100 in the gradual step process. Um, so now, if Dave survives as Dave 100 in the gradual uploading process, there's. It seems to be that there's nothing special about doing that instantly, or we speed it up. Um, if uh, there's nothing unique about spreading it over 100 months that makes it philosophically significant. So if we can do it over 100 months, why not do it over 10 minutes? Why not over? Why not do it over over you know a minute? Um, if if identity persisted in the previous case, it'll pers persist in the latter case. So Dave survives as digital Dave in instant uploading as a result of that argument. So Chalmers concludes that we should be optimists about survival of personal identity in uploading, even if it happens fast, even if it's, even if it's um, instant. Okay, so where are we now? Um, big picture, the first phase of this article was to explore and suss out the details about 
um, what a singularity might be and could there be a, a self-amplifying process unfold technologically that could produce um, uh, systems that could then have some um, capacity that we care about. This is, um, this is Chalmers' version of the argument that removes any mention of intelligence. And he ends up concluding, it seems like there are there's good reason to think that we're going to come up with a technological system that has a self-amplifying capacity, like in I.J. Good's original conjecture from 1965, that um, this thing can be put to work designing um, systems that are like it but better, and that, that those systems, as a result, will correlate or as a as a correlated capacity will have the ability to um, uh, do something or have a capacity that we care about, something like intelligence or something, you know, be able to produce some outputs like we're interested in. Um, and then Chalmers ends up arguing that the obstacles to that thing will be motivational rather than in terms of their capacities. And I left off some of that discussion from the last time, but that's in the middle of the article and you can find it there. And then this last discussion has been about um, okay, so how do we deal with that? Given that there's a singularity coming, uh, what do we do? Well, um, we should uh, proceed very carefully by building appropriate values into machines and by building the first AI and AI plus systems in virtual worlds um, is part of what Chalmers argues for in that previous discussion. And then today we've been talking about how do we deal? And what we the way he thinks we should deal is that we need to integrate. We need to uh, transition over to, to synthetic or artificial forms ourselves. And that by gradual uploading followed by enhancement, if we're still around then, or by reconstructive uploading by, followed by enhancement, if we're not, um, we can deal with the singularity as a result.